thanks for joining me. I'm finishing off this picture. I've done a bit off screen, but I'll show you the techniques I'm using. I decided the other video was really quite long. So at the moment I'm busy with the C and I really wanted to get a nice white splash and I didn't kind of know how to do it. I tried it a bit with pencils and then I thought I'm going to use gouache so I'm using I don't have much gouache I've got a set of Reeves squash and I've squeezed out cobalt blue ultramarine blue blue lake and of course white and I've got two smallish paint brushes and some water now with gouache I think you don't use as much water and I've been using here mostly the ultramarine blue and now I also mixed some of that ultramarine blue with a bit of white and I'm just filling in bits and I want to leave some of the watercolor that I had as well. Um, I've got a very small little brush here so that I can get the fine detail. I just want to get behind there. I think I must put my water out of the way here. I'm going to... So I don't want to... I had wanted to do more textures, but um, just kind of smoothing that out a little bit. I first started just going over the black lines that Theresa Goodridge had drawn. Oh dear, somebody at the door, sorry. Hello there, I'm back again. I have had a bit of a disaster. I filmed myself doing the detailing of the sky and the detailing of the rocks and the roofs and I used my fine liner on the little window sills and lo and behold oh I need a sip of water I finished doing it all and nothing had filmed I it was filming I checked in the while I was filming but I use my iPhone to film with and I've discovered that if it goes above about 10-15 minutes a session it overheats and it seems to lose everything I've done and I tried to press stop filming and it struggled to stop and then lo and behold everything disappeared so I must apologize, this is no longer a color along, it's kind of a chat about what I did with this because, and it will no longer be three parts, it will be two parts, I'll be finishing it off now here with you. Um, so what I did for detailing is I did use some Prisma colors every here and there, but I mostly used these, I'm not sure if you know these pencils, they're the Kohinoor Hardmut tritone pencils and this is 23 pencils with one blender and I really like them for this kind of thing because they come with a mixture of three colors and you can see every pencil this one is called sunset and I've used it quite a lot here and it has two a red a pink and a yellow and all of them are blended into the core of that oil or wax um, pigment core and um, so I'll just do a little bit here so you can see it sort of gives you a very soft kind of mix of color and I do my detailing in a mix of pressures depending how hard I want it to be so when I want it to be a lightish pressure lightish pressure excuse me my mouth is falling over itself then I tend to hold the pencil right towards the back when I want more direct control I hold it nearer the point 
and then I'm just going to gently blend that out and um, these pencils color beautifully over the watercolor there leave that little bit of white I think this needs blending out so just going over things like that and that's what I did on the houses as well now I've got a couple of windows to color in so I'm going to do that here I'm also using these pencils for that some light there just basically pressing quite hard and coloring it in like a kid would color then for the light on the lamp I'm going to use a fine liner I'm using my Staedtler Tri Plus just going to do the light there and there was another lamp there we are so then at the top of the lamp I'm going to use a dark I used the dark gray actually for the pencils around this dark gray of the Staedtler Tri Plus so I'm going to use the light gray of the Staedtler Tri Plus here just so that it will stand out above and then I want to do the doors in a kind of a brown so I'm going to use this pencil I want to just sharpen it quickly so I've got a good point on it There we are. I'm going to make brown doors, and I think I'm going to use the same brown for the tree trunks. This is a dark lower casement window, I think, or shutter or something, not entirely sure. What I do find with these pencils is that some of them, like this one, are beautifully soft and color very well. Some of them are a little bit hard. I need to do the window frames in this. And I think I'll use a different color to what I used on the house. I think I'll go... Um, I think I'm going to go with this kind of red because of the whole lighthouse. Thing. This is a stabile fine point. Another fine liner that I really like using. So I must say, as I'm busy coloring here, I'm mildly terrified that it's going to freeze on me again. So disappointing when you do something and I was judging about all kinds of things, can't remember what now, so they're probably unimportant, but um, it's a bit disconcerting that they've all just disappeared. I think I'll use a pale grey here on this boardwalk and a pale grey on that door just so that it stands out from and I must say my eyesight doesn't do lines like this it makes me quite dizzy but I'm hoping I'm in the lines you can tell me in the video if it's not in the lines Colouring by hope. Colour with a wish. So, over here I'm just going to use a pink mix to 
go into this fine little area. There we are. And now we've got the tree trunks. I'm using this pencil which is called Earth Turns for the tree trunks. Don't you love seeing trees down at the sea and the way they fight the wind and they just look like these incredibly hardy, gnarly things. <laughs> and then the, those that kind of form those wonderful umbrellas that you can picnic under. When the children were small, I used to go down to a place called Gordon's Bay. And um, there was a nice collection of trees there that I used to picnic with them. There's another place that doesn't have a lot of trees, um, but where the penguins are in Cape Town called Seaforth and Boulders. We used to specifically go to Boulders. Sorry about the background sound. Somebody's doing something in their garden. And we used to go down there often early in the morning to the sea. I'd leave home at five o'clock because it used to take about an hour to drive pack breakfast in and we'd have breakfast and the penguins would be there and you swim with the penguins so it was quite amazing. When I was a teenager I used to go down to Musenberg Beach all the time and we've recently had a school reunion for 50 years since our final school year and we did it on Zoom last year and so a number of us have been chatting since then. And a friend sent me some amazing photos of when we were teenagers down on Musenberg Beach. It was so awesome to sort of relive the memory through the old black and white photos. Now I'm just going to detail this tree, these trees actually. I think these here will just to, I'm just doing a little bit around the edges just to bring some interest and stop it being so flat looking in some of the leaves. So it's so much quicker when one does a watercolour background first because you can get your picture finished more quickly and have a chance to play with more of your toys and tools. <laughs> I must say I feel like a kid when I colour, it's such fun. So I think that's that there. As you can see I'm not I don't know if it's because my eyesight's so bad, maybe it looks terrible. I'm going to be having an eye up in about two months time. Two weeks apart, first one eye, then the other eye. And hoping that's going to help. You may see a great improvement in my colouring then. want to do the edges here as well. So you can use any pencils though for the detailing. Prismacolors work very well over watercolour as well. There, that's worked well there and then for these I actually want a Prismacolor sort of piney colour. I hope I've got one here this one. It's an unused pencil. I finished the last one and bought a new one. This is called Dark Green. I think this is my third dark green Prismacolor that I'm using. It's 
a very useful green. It's PC908. So I just want to go over some of those like where the pine boughs would be. Create a couple of sort of shadows and things by doing that. I have this one sharpener that makes these Prismacolor points. This is the point it came with. Um, but I actually prefer a long thin point and I suppose with the Prismacolor it's silly because in a way with their very soft lead they're probably designed to have this kind of a point so that you can put a bit more pressure on without fear of breaking the lead. So there, that's that done. And the last thing is I'm going to use a very pale grey Prismacolor. So this is 20% Cool Grey PC1060 just for the cement work around the houses. I don't know if it's what colour it would be but that's the colour I'm using and I've gone over the fencing. So I need to bring this out again and just darken that up. And the street lamp, there we are. And what else was there? Uh, perhaps that cool gray all along here. And some. I'm using grey for this here because it's in the distance and I don't think you would see the brownness of the tree. There we are. And now what colour do we want to do? I want to just pinkish yellow for and a point on me pencil for in between here there's little bits of sunlight I think a nice color just shining through the trees Just so it looks a little bit different to the houses. So I think the very last thing left to do here is this little boat. What should we make it? I had thought of a turquoise but that won't shine. Um, what colour are boats? Like a red. Let's make it a red funnel at any rate. I'm using the fine liner here. And whatever that little thing at the back is I'm making red. And then Perhaps a sort of a turquoise blue. No, that's not going to sh show. Brownish. Maybe that sort of a colour for the boat. Which turns well with the red. And I think we're done. So, I'm going to put the lid back on here. Oops. So, I really would recommend if you don't have these and if you feel like spoiling yourself with something, if it's time to be kind to you, 
that you look at these. I'll put a link to them in my in the description of this video. And I'm sure most of you have seen this book already. It's not such a new book anymore, this Teresa Goodrich book. But I'll put a link to that as well. I hope you've enjoyed this. I wanted to just point out that I think that the gouache... I'm sorry we didn't get to be doing this together, but I think the gouache turned out quite nicely with the waves. So I'm fairly happy with how this was and how this has turned out. And I thank you very much for coloring along with me or for watching the video and for being one of my subscribers or for just joining in the channel for a quick pop in. Have a wonderful and colorful week. Bye bye now.